Hello, my name is Hallie, and I'm a grade 11 student at Oak Bay High. In the beginning of term two, my English 11 class began the Shakespeare unit. We studied the play Macbeth and learned about various themes and motives. We also learned about the writer himself, William Shakespeare, and about his early life, and his life as a play famous playwright in London, England. William Shakespeare lived more than 450 years ago. He was baptized in Stratford-upon-Avon, near London. His birth date was approximately April 23, 1564. As a boy, he entered King's New School, a grammar school in Stratford, and attended by sons of civil servants like his father. Its curriculum consisted of intense emphasis on the Latin classics, including memorization, writing, and acting classic Latin plays. Many say because his education was so exceptional, this was where he developed his advanced vocabulary starting at a very young age. Around 1590, Shakespeare writes his first play, Henry V, Part I. Around the same time, Shakespeare leaves for Stratford, England. There, he begins work as a playwright and actor in London, but the rest of his family stays. Gradually, Shakespeare begins to gain recognition enough to make his peers jealous of his work. In 1593, the theaters closed because of the plague. He uses this time to benefit by being able to write more plays unbothered with all the free time on his hands. In the spring of 1594, the London theaters reopened to the public. During the next five years, Shakespeare's troupe, the Chamberlain's Men, becomes one of the most popular acting groups in London. They accept frequent invitations to perform to the royal court of Queen Elizabeth I. In late 1582, William Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway. She was already expecting their firstborn child, Susanna. When they married, Anne was 26 and William was 18. In 1585, they had twins, Judith and Hamnet. After the birth, there are seven years of Shakespeare's life where no records exist. This period is called the Lost Years. And there are many theories on what he was doing in this period. Shakespeare had multiple roles as an actor, a playwright, and eventually a business partner in an acting company. He remained a member of his company for the rest of his career, often playing before the court of Queen Elizabeth I. Shakespeare entered one of the most prolific periods around, the, around 1595, writing Richard II, Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer's Night's Dream, and The Merchant of Venice. With his newfound success, Shakespeare purchased the second largest home in Stratford in 1597, though he continued to live in London. Gradually, he became more famous in the London theatre world, and his name became the selling point. When Macbeth is returning from war with Banquo, the three witches tell them prophecies, one of them being that Macbeth will become king. Macbeth believes them, and this is a contributing factor in Macbeth's ambition. However, it's unclear that if these prophecies are true, or if Macbeth was only told these prophecies because they knew that he would take action. Then later, he tells his wife, Lady Macbeth, The raven is hoarse, that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan. Under my battlements, come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty. Make my blood thick, stop up the access of the passage to remorse, that no compunctions, visitings of nature shake my foul purpose, nor keep the peace between the fact and it. Come, come to my woman's breasts, and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, whenever your slightest substances, you wait on nature's mischief. Come, come thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of dark, to cry, hold, hold. Lady Macbeth speaks these words in Act 1, Scene 5, lines 36 to 52, as she waits for King Duncan to arrive her to her castle. Previously, we have seen Macbeth's uncertainty about whether he should take the crown by, king, by killing King Duncan. In her speech, she gives no hesitation on seizing the throne, and she will do whatever it takes. 
Her strength of ambition is contrasted with her husband Macbeth's tendency to labor. This speech shows to the audience that Lady Macbeth is the push behind Macbeth, and that her ambition can be strong enough to drive her husband forward. The language of this speech displays the theme of masculinity. Some examples are, unsex me here, come to my woman's breasts, and take my milk for gall. Lady Macbeth quotes as she gets herself ready to commit murder. Her word suggests that her femininity and womanhood would stop her from performing acts of violence and cruelty. She associates this with manliness. Later in the play, the sense of relationship between masculinity and crime will expand when Macbeth is unwilling to go through these murders. She tells him in effect that he needs to be a man and get it done with. Her ambition of wanting Duncan's throne rubs off on Macbeth when he starts getting what he wants by murder. His ambition soon spirals out of control and forces him to murder again and again to cover up his previous killings. Macbeth's first victims are the Chamberlains, who are blamed and killed by Macbeth for the murder of King Duncan. Banquo's murder comes once after Macbeth realizes that the truth could be exposed. Ambition eventually causes the downfall of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. This theme of ambition has a series of consequences in the play. For example, Macbeth is killed by Macduff, and Lady Macbeth commits suicide. Shakespeare doesn't give either characters the opportunity to properly enjoy what they had killed for.